I, I would like to, I, I know we got some other stuff to cover, but I, I love the book that you did home to home, mm -hmm. uh, help, helping people uh, figure out what to do with uh, aging parents. Yeah. What do you do with the assets? How do you uh, right. get the best bang for your buck? You want to, you, you want to talk about that just a little bit? Yeah. So what happened was is it's 2017. I'm two years into flipping houses. I've done about 120 houses personally um, in these last, you know, five years, but I'm at about deal number 40 or so 2017 and the competition I'm in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, the competition just start going way up. Um, I was, it wasn't for lack of effort. I mean, like I was, I was doing yellow letters. I was cold calling. I had uh, two people that were helping me buy houses. You know, I was doing all the stuff that, you know, that you're supposed to do, but my return on ad spend just kept getting lower and lower. And the reason was because pretty much everybody in my market was inundating the same people with the same message. And um, I was just another investor in the stack of mail. And so what I did was, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, right. It well, happened. You're just noise. It, you know, it's no one. They couldn't differentiate yeah. you from anyone else. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So what I did was I made a list. I was actually getting really frustrated with the business because I just felt like a commodity. Um, and so I was like, I'm either going to do something a little different or I'm going to just leave and not do this anymore because it's just not worth it. And so I made a list of the things that like actually matter to me. And so for me, I wanted to do deals where I made a good profit on a deal. It takes me about the same amount of time to do a high profit deal as a skinny one. So I want to just do those. I don't care. I'm not worried about impressing people with how many deals I do. I rather, matter of fact, I'd rather do 12 deals that are really, really amazing than 36 thin ones because I don't have as much risk on those. So more margin. My lenders are all super happy when you have, you know, higher margin deals on and on and on. So I wanted to do those. I wanted to work with people that actually like saw me as a trusted guide for them, not just, uh, you know, I would go and like show comps to people at their houses and they would argue with me. And they don't even, they don't even, they don't know what's going on with their neighborhood. You know, I'm not being disrespectful, but it's like, I'm the professional here, not you. That, that, otherwise, why are you calling me? And so I didn't like that. I like working with people who were like, we need your help. Please help us. Thank sure. you. And I just want to work with people that were just nice people. You know, I'd have some people call me. I have to, I went to the Grand Prairie, uh, our city in our town jail to go bail somebody out of jail to go to the closing. I'm just like, <laughs> did I really get to this point in my life to be doing this? Is this the highest and best use of my time? Like I just, I'd have people who were, they call me one minute and they were happy. Then the next minute they call screaming and cussing. And I'm like, I'm just not, that's not where I'm at. Okay. And so here's what happened. So most of my list, most of the deals I already done, they didn't meet all three of those criteria, which was obvious because that's why I wasn't very happy. But the ones who did, you didn't, you didn't have to be a math teacher to figure out what the pattern was. They were all seniors. And I was like, huh. And so I dug deeper and I looked into it. And I found out that most of these seniors, the leads that I was getting, they weren't coming from my normal campaigns. They weren't on you know, the, the for pre foreclosure list, a lot of them own their houses outright. And when I went over to their houses, sometimes I, when I would buy them, I wouldn't even have the highest offer. Um, and so I called one of those sellers and I said, Hey, do you remember me? I bought your house like about six months ago. And they're like, yeah. And I go, well, did you have a higher offer from someone else? And they're like, yeah. And I go, well, why did you go with me? And they said, basically it's because they trusted me and they felt like I was actually there trying to help their parents not just give them a sales pitch. And for them, where they were in their life, that that was, you know, that was worth more than $10,000 difference. And so that, that was kind of the aha moment. I didn't get the idea for the book until I was actually bought a house at a motivated seller's house. And the dad was there. I helped him find a new place to live, bought the house in uh, Richland Hills, Texas. And all of his kids were there and they were all in their like 50s, 60s. You know, that's the age when, you know, your parents start to get up there and you're dealing with all this. And they said um, they were really appreciative. You know, like one of them was crying, you know, because the family homes being sold like they're in their 50s and 60s and they grew up in that house. Sure. And, but they needed to, you know, the dad couldn't was falling down. He couldn't take care of himself. And um, and I was like. So one of them came up to me and they said, you know, you've helped their family a ton. You know a lot about this. You know, you should write a book about this. And um, 
if I was if I was getting picked in high school as least likely to write a book or even read a book, <laughs> it would have been me out of 500 kids. Like I was like, there's no way I'm writing a book. You know, I'm Good just like, we don't get judged by what we do in high school, huh? <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, we can level up. You know, I'm like, I'm dyslexic. I can't write a book. Turns out that people can help you. <laughs> And, you know, it just takes a little longer. And so at first I was like, no, I'm not doing that. But then I said, you know, that's actually a good idea. I've seen people in other industries, you know, other verticals use a book and position themselves as an expert, as an authority. And it was really effective. And so I was like, I'll give it a go. I basically just wrote down all the questions that these homeowners were asking me, you know, all the questions that they should know just kind of like a peer behind the curtain kind of book. And I just, it's just a how to informational guide. And it took a couple hundred hours to write it. I wrote it and uh, that was the first book. And I just started giving it out to my, just my normal marketing, but I would let people know about the book on it. And I get all these extra calls. And then I had a church call me up and they said, Hey, we got a copy of your book. Can you come in like speak and like maybe sign some books and give them away to people. And, you know, I had uh, three workshops in one week. I got four deals. I actually just got a deal from it um, a few weeks ago. And the lady held on to my book for two years, which is wow. insane. Nobody's holding on to my yellow letters or postcards <laughs> for two years. So it's like, you know, I did this work once and I go get copies for $5 and I give them to somebody and they cherish it. It's not a piece of trash. It's not another one of those letters from those damn you know, sharks or scumbags or whatever they call real estate investors sometimes because there's a few people giving us a bad name. They're like, oh, here's a really nice young man who's trying to help people, which is true. And I'm trying to build my business. And, you know, investors are smart. So my friends and my mastermind were like, hey, I like what you're doing with this. You know, you're not buying houses in Florida. You're not buying houses in Chicago. Can we use your book somehow? And I'm like, I don't know what, like, I don't understand. <laughs> and then I kind of started learning more about it and figuring it out. And, and then we created a licensing program to where our authors, which are normally experienced investors, brokers, agents, they, um, they see the value of a book, but they don't want to write one themselves. So they pay a flat fee. They fill out a form. It takes about an hour and we customize and create an edition just for them. They pick the title, they pick the cover we write in about them. So in like one hour of their time in less than 30 days, they have a book done for motivated sellers or private lenders, you know, or wh whoever we have different ones. Uh, yeah. And sure. then they can just give it out and use it as their business card. And it's kind of cool because it, it allows you to like, just make the other stuff that you already do work better because when you have a book, people just trust you more. People who aren't ready to do something, just call sure. you to get a free copy of the book. But then it also opens up some new stuff, new marketing channels, because marketing is important. And if you're not getting leads in your business, you don't have a business. And so I knew it was like an important area. I didn't know how what it would all turn into. I didn't expect there to be a publishing company or any of that. It just sort of happened. So, you know, when you said at the beginning, I'm in a lot of things. Really, I'm just I'm in the marketing of a lot of things. But it's all about marketing because every company needs that every it's the most important skill so this has been a way that we can kind of um you know turn up the horsepower and create something once and get a benefit from it for a long time 